Can we just start off by saying that this is a picture of Google Images? Hey guys and welcome to today's video. Recently I've been seeing a lot of videos talking about pet info. Recently I've been seeing a lot of videos talking about hamster and recently I have been seeing a l <coughs> Sorry, I've been away from camera for a month. Recently I've been seeing a lot of videos talking about hamster information leaf- Hamster information leaflets from other pet shops in other countries. I have not watched any videos in the UK involving pets at home leaflets simply because I didn't want anything to influence my opinion. I wanted all my words to be my own and everything I was speaking to come out of my mouth as I was thinking it so that I could judge this information leaflet. So today we're going to be going over this information leaflet from Pets at Home. This is the Pets at Home guide to caring for your Syrian hamster. They do have one for dwarves. I'm sure they actually have one for Chinese hamsters as well. They have one for your rabbits, your guinea pigs. Every animal that you can get from Pets at Home, they usually have a leaflet that goes with that animal. I did go through this and I highlighted all the parts that I wanted to emphasize on just so that I could keep track of where I am because I have such a small memory and I'm stupid. I forget stuff. I went through it all and I read it and I highlighted all the parts that I wanted to actually speak about just so that we weren't here all day talking about the same stuff on repeat. Let's start where every reader would start with this. Let's start with the cover for this leaflet. The Pets at Home Guide to Caring for Your Syrian Hamster. Pets at Home where pets come first. Yes, I'm sure they do. I don't actually want to go ahead and bash pets at home too bad here because watching other channels that have did this kind of video and read the leaflets about pet care in their pet stores, pets at home seem relatively a little bit more up to speed with the care for smaller pets. I don't want to say they're 100% right on this. They recently just had a scandal with all their new enclosures for their pet homes and them being involved with uh, turning it into a child's playground basically, insert a clip here, but the care for them in this leaflet is actually pretty up to scratch. So it starts off by saying all pet owners have a legal responsibility to meet their pet's welfare needs which includes providing a suitable diet and environment, companionship and ensuring they are kept healthy and able to perform natural behaviours. If you're thinking about having a Syrian hamster as a pet, learn as much as you can about how to care for him or her beforehand. So I love how they say him and her and it's not just a straight him because usually when you read um, articles online and stuff like that for hamsters they genuinely just say him constantly and it's as if people forget that hamsters are female as well. You should take your lifestyle and household into account as well as his or her likely lifespan when deciding whether you can offer a good home. This leaflet explains Syrian hamsters basic needs so you can decide if they're right for you. This is a good leaflet whether a lot of people pick them up or not I'm not sure but we are going to obviously go through it and decipher out what parts in it should change and then I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this leaflet and I'm going to revamp it and I'm going to post it as a blog post on my blog online so yeah that's going to happen as well and I will link that down below. So the first line that comes here is Syrian hamsters as pets so this is going to tell you what a Syrian hamster is. Syrian hamsters are nocturnal so they spend most of the day sleeping and become active in the evening and at night. Okay, so this is a little bit true and it's a little bit of lies because hamsters are crepuscular and this means that they're awake more in the twilight hours. The next part of this leaflet says they do not like to be disturbed when they are sleeping. True, if you disturb your hamster it can cause them to be stressed and also it can make them be angry as well which isn't nice because you could incur a bite from that which is not fun and then you'll think your hamster hates you. Syrian hamsters can make good family pets if they're cared for properly. This is so true because Hamsters are so loving and caring animals when they actually do become bonded with you and start to show you love and they tend to need you more than you would think they do. Considering they are solitary animals, they're only solitary towards their species rather than humans. I've said before in a different video, hamsters tend to see humans in a different light to what they do actual other hamsters. So they don't see them as the same threat, they don't see them as the same thing and Syrian hamsters can tend to need their human companions a lot more than what you would think they do. The next part of this says Syrian hamsters generally live from two to two and a half years. In my experience this hasn't always been true because as I've said before Mercury is three, turning, turning three and a half years old which is crazy because he is due to turn my oldest hamster that I've ever owned. He's roughly three and a half, four years old. But most hamsters will unfortunately only live between two and two and a half years old. 
It all depends on how you care for them and then it all depends on the individual hamster by themselves as well. The next question in this one, and remember this is a hamster care guide for Syrians, so the next one says, do I like company? It reads, Syrian hamsters are naturally solitary animals. Good. It means your hamster will need to live alone. Their territorial nature will lead to fights if they are kept as a pair. If you'd like to have more than one hamster, consider keeping dwarf hamsters or other species such as rats, mice or gerbils. Okay, the, the, the fact that I have a problem with this is male mice need to be kept on their own. So this leaflet literally kind of just goes ahead and says, have mice as pairs, they can all live together. No, you would have needed to state that in there because if someone changes their mind and decides off this leaflet they want to have mice instead and then you give them two mice that are male and then they're left with a problem when they start fighting. So yeah, that just felt like it needed to be a little bit more cleared up. The only mice you should really keep together is females. Okay, so this next one is highlighted with a lot of green. Like, that's a lot. Syrian hamsters need a lot of exercise so buy as big a cage as possible. Okay, a highlight, I can remember highlighting that bit because I like the fact that they're promoting bigger cages, I just don't like the fact that they're not telling the owners, the potential owners, how big a cage they should actually have. Just remember that in the US, the minimum cage size is 450 square inches, and I believe in the UK it's 620 square inches, just recalling from the top of my head. They should be putting in this leaflet. Syrian hamsters need a lot of exercise, so buy a cage no smaller than 450 square inches. That lets hams potential hamster owners know, right, these, these small pets do need a lot of space. Instead of just saying, buy as big a cage as you can. That potential hamster owner could go into the pet shop and see a critter trail cage sitting on the shelf and think that is a big cage. They don't know, they might not know that the hamster potentially needs a way more space than that. They do say ideally with a deep plastic base and a wire top, wire sides will allow your hamster to climb the bars of the cage. The deep plastic base bit, thumbs up to that because you do need more than 5 inches of substrate. Ideally more than 5 inches would be great but 5 inches to 6 inches of substrate is the minimum that you should really have in your cage for a healthy hamster that can burrow. Climbing the bars of the cage is something you don't really want your hamster to be doing. Some hamsters enjoy climbing and some of them will want to actually climb the bars of the cage and there's not a problem with that but most of the time it's just due to stress so you don't really want to have them climb the bars of the cage because that's technically your hamster turning around and saying to you this cage is boring and I am bored, please get me out of here. Your hamster will need a good quality hamster mix or nuggets such as Pets at Home hamster food. While we go Pets at Home, great promotion, you've got to throw that in there you know because you need to make sales, this is your leaflet. But, if you do want to change your hamster food, don't forget you do need to give it a period of 10 days. The next part of this that I highlighted and I wanted to talk about was remove any uneaten, fresh or stale food daily. Personally, I wouldn't remove the fresh food. I don't know if they mean by uneaten, fresh food as in like vegetables and fruits. If there's vegetables and fruits and you've left them in there all day, I would remove them if they started going stale. I wouldn't remove and change your hamster's seed mix every single day. I would leave it there for a maximum of three days. I feed my hamsters every three days and it's very, very unlikely that I'll feed my hamsters if I feel like there's still a bit too much food in their bowls. I usually wait till their bowls are completely empty, that way that I know they're eating all the good stuff for them and they're eating all the other parts that they would normally just eat and then they would leave all the rubbish. So I make sure that they're eating everything and then they're getting all that goodness that they need in their bodies as well. What do I like to do? Stimulating natural behaviour by providing opportunities for your hamster to chew, hide, climb, explore, dig, forage will keep your pet amused. Yes, this is true, this is why you need a big cage because your hamster does need a lot of toys to be able to keep them entertained while they're stuck in their cage. Again, they mentioned as they are nocturnal which is lies because a hamster is crepuscular. Hamsters are very active at night and need a lot of space and things to explore while you're asleep. So this is fair, this is them hinting at the fact that a hamster needs a big cage again. They don't give you a number exactly so really they should update this and add that in and this way people will actually start to keep their hamsters in cages that are the proper size for them. The next part that I highlighted was a did you know and this was simply just to remember me to tell you guys this. Hamsters can sometimes run up to 48 miles in an evening. Sometimes hamsters can travel up to 12 miles in an evening. Even at night time they can travel up to 12 miles a day we'll just say. And this is why it's so important to always have a hamster wheel in your hamster's cage. Because I've seen Snowball get up to get food and a drink of water and she's hopped on her wheel, went for a little run, ran back to her bed, went to sleep. She's did this a couple of times throughout the day. So it's just to make them 
feel as if they're actually traveling and going somewhere and burn off that excess energy that they have. How to handle me. When you first take your hamster home, give him or her a day or two to settle in. Personally, I would tell you to give them a week to settle in. If you give them six to seven days to settle, six to seven days to settle in, not six to seven, then this gives your hamster plenty of time to explore the new environment, to scent stuff, make the place smell like their own, and if the place smells more like their own, it's going to make them feel a lot more safe and a lot more calm in their environment. Throughout this week though, you can start talking to them, sitting watching them, putting your hands into their cage, familiarising your scent with them, and slowly but surely you can lead on to taming them in the second week from that. There's a good point in here that says, never wake your hamster up abruptly just to hold them. This could incur a bite, and this is so true, your hamster doesn't like to be woken up. They just want to be able to sleep and then inter interact with you again in their time. If they're awake and they're... Usually I go with their ears. If a hamster's ears are back, don't approach. If their ears are up, approach them. That means that they're quite happy to interact with you and it means they're quite um, happy in general and they're happy to just explore about and play and be interacted with. So if your hamster's ears are back, it generally means that they've just got up to go for a drink or get something to eat and then go back to bed, they're not entirely happy, they're quite grumpy. So yeah, go with the ear situation if that helps you. Keeping me clean. Clean your hamster's cage out thoroughly once a week using a pet safe disinfectant. So if you have a cage that meets the minimum requirement of 450 square inches, you should generally be able to stop cleaning your hamster's cage out every single week, save yourself money, because you should be able to get away with cleaning your hamster's cage out once a month or at least once every three weeks if you're keeping up your spot cleaning. And you don't need to use pet safe disinfectant either. You can use a half vinegar, half water mix or general soap and water as long as you genuinely rinse the cage out properly. You can even get away with just wiping the cage down with some water because the hamster cage doesn't need a deep clean every time you clean it. Once every couple of months you can deep clean it, but you don't need to deep clean it every time you clean it. And you don't need to remove all your substrate every time you clean it. You can do the half and half mixture, replace half the bedding with clean bedding and replace half the bedding with old bedding to keep your hamster's smell familiar. There's loads of different ways that you can clean out your hamster cage and if you meet the minimum requirements, you won't have to clean out your hamster cage once every week because the smell won't be there. If you've got a small cage, however, you probably will have to clean your cage out every single week because the buildup of ammonia will become unbearable because there's not enough substrate in the cage. Keep me fit and healthy. A healthy diet and hygienic conditions will help keep your hamster in good health, but there are a number of potential problems that you should be aware of. Keep your hamster's cage away from drafts. In cold weather, give your pet more nesting material. Consider moving his cage into a slightly warmer room. See, I said his. It does say on this sheet has or hers, but I said his. It's because I've got boys everywhere. I have boy rat, I have boy cats, I have boy hamster. I have three females. Oh, I have three males and three females now. That's, that's literally me just noticed that. What is wrong with me? Yeah, so basically just give your hamster the suitable wheel that you want to give them, which if, for it's, if it's for a Syrian, it's 10 to 12 inches and for dwarves it's 6.5 to 10 inches. On the back is basically just a lot of rubbish. It's a shopping list, is a Syrian pet hamster right for you? That's basically a quick read. I'm showing you this upside down. I'll flip it in post. But this is basically just a quick read. The part on here that I highlighted is this is basic information only. So if you decide you can care for a Syrian hamster, you'll need to obtain more detailed information beforehand. Support adoption for pet centres. Never abandon any pet or release them into the wild. So this is definitely one of the better ones that is out there. From what I've seen, Petco and PetSmart ones are really, really bad. I think PetSmart's never... I see the PetSmart or Petco, but one of them's never updated it for the 1990s. So yeah, Pets at Home definitely is trying to keep up with the trends but at the same time, they keep throwing things into the mixture like that enclosure controversy that we had on Twitter the other week. Yeah, this is actually a really good care leaf flip. I got these ones a little while ago, so I don't know if there's any that's been updated recently or anything. It's kind of good. I'll say it's, it's not mediocre, it's just above mediocre. It could be better. It's got good information in it that is useful, but not all the information is accurate as well. If you are going to get your first hamster, don't rely on one of these. Have a read through it because some of them do actually have some good information in them, but just remember to cross-reference that with your own research online. Join some hamster community forums. I have links down in the description that you can go and join Hamster Hideout, Hamster Central. There's even the Hamster Council link down there. So yeah, 
if you guys don't check out my description, do check out the description because I throw a lot of stuff down there sometimes. I do have affiliate links in there, so just so that you're aware of that, if you do want to buy any of the products that I currently use for my hamsters or my rat, the links for all the wheels and stuff like that that I use currently are down there, but they are all affiliate links, so just be aware of that. With all of that wrapped up, I'm okay with I'm okay with this leaflet, but it could be way better. But anyway guys, I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and yeah. Bye guys.